unless you send the preacher take Levi Combs out of self and give me a fresh anointing consecrate me to this thy service by thy power of grace divine let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord to thy place where thou hast died draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord to thy precious bleeding sign in your name we pray, our soul says, Amen. God say amen. amen. Let the people of God say amen again. Amen. And one for the Holy Ghost. Amen. And who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. I want to preach to you for a few minutes about how to survive the blackout. Uh, uh, find, find somebody and tell them I'm going to learn how to survive the blackout. Uh, no, to turn and find somebody else and tell them they don't believe you. Tell them I'm going to survive the blackout. I believe that all of us uh, can relate and contend that we have all experienced electrical blackouts. 
We've all had <clears throat> those experiences. We've all been caught in the middle of a blackout while in the process of preoccupation. See, because blackouts always come unexpected and uninvited. I don't know anybody that likes blackouts because not only are you unable to see your way, but it puts you at the mercy of the meter man to restore your power. There's nothing worse than experiencing a blackout and you're unprepared. And because when you are unprepared, there's no place to go and no place to run. You simply must wait until help arrives. And I believe that we as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ look back over the landscape, or can look back over the landscape of our lives and can admit that we too have had some spiritual blackouts. Uh, we too have been caught off guard and unprepared. We too have been busy doing our own thing and then God turns the light off on our path. We too have found our preoccupied selves at the mercy seat of God asking, what did we do? And where did we go wrong? But I've come to tell you and tell somebody that God has a way of getting our attention. God has a way of compelling you and I back to his fold. Uh, God has a way of reminding us that had it not been but for the grace of God, we would be on our way to a burning hell. Now, Isaiah, in this text who is the preacher of the day. Isaiah he is revered as the prince of the Old Testament prophets because Isaiah is unparalleled in brilliance. He's unmatched in splendor of diction and eloquence of speech. Isaiah, whose name means salvation from the Lord, he is God's man for this hour. And now he is tasked to open his mouth and speak for the Lord. And he says at verse 1, thus says the Lord, where is your mother's certificate of divorce with which I sent her away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities were sold and your transgressions, uh, uh, and for your transgression your mother was sent away. This is, in this text, God having a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Israel. See, because Jehovah is trying to remind them that it was not for some trifling whim that he divorced them, nor did he deliver them to the Chaldeans because of any debt that the gent uh, to that Gentile nation. The reason was their own iniquities and their own transgressions. In other words, God is saying, I didn't leave you you left me. Uh, I didn't waver from uh, with uh, I didn't waver with my favor. You wavered with your faith. And sometimes the unexpected circumstances of life come because we've allowed life to get in the way of our relationship with God. I wish I had a witness here. We've allowed life to stand between us and our relationship. We've allowed the enemy that the enemy's distractions to block God's destination for our lives. And God is saying, don't put the blame on me because I've always been there. Is there anybody here that knows God has always been there? Even when you turned around, God was always there. Even when you let go, God was always there because he said, I would not what? Leave you. No, I wish I had a Bible read in this place. Look at what he says at verse 2. He says, why when I came home? was there no man and why when I called there was no answer see nobody in the nation welcomed him and no one answered God's call what he's saying is when I came home I came home to an empty house oh I wish I had somebody you ever come home tired and want to see somebody and you have to come into an empty house and it depresses you for a moment? 
Then he says, not only did I come to an empty house, but when I called, you refused to answer. Y'all know as parents, you've had them times when you've called your children. You know they heard you when you was downstairs and they were upstairs, but they refused to answer the call. And then you said, okay, so since you didn't want to answer me when I called you the first time, I'm not going to give you what you want to eat. I'm going to give you what I want to feed you. Oh, I wish I had a witness. And God is saying, I'm not going to give you what you want because when I came home to ask you the question you wasn't there to receive what I had for you oh my god I feel like preaching now see see no one no one wanted to answer God and God is saying all right well if you don't want to answer me if you don't want to do what uh what I want you to do uh uh if you want to block me out honey this is what I can do I can black you out See, because verse 3 says this. Verse 3 says, I clothe the heavens with blackness and make sackcloth their covering. If you block God out, he'll black you out. Y'all not getting what I'm saying. When you block God out of your life, he will blacken life out of you. Y'all still, y'all looking, but you're not listening. When you allow the enemy to get a hold of you and you refuse to follow the will of God, God will put you in a period of mourning. God will cause your, 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 your sun to become your evening. God will cause your good days to become your bad days. God will turn your tears of joy into tears of sorrow because you turned your back on him Amen. have I got a witness here yes. but I've got some hope and help for the believer that finds him or herself in a blackout situation I've got three points and I will take my seat because I can't stand long first thing in order to survive a blackout You've got to learn how to submit to instruction. See, because Isaiah says, as God is speaking in verse 4, the Lord has given me the tongue of those are, who are taught that I may know to sustain, here it is, with a word, him who is weary. And then he says, and morning by morning, he awakens and he repeats it. it says he awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught somebody say I've got to hear and I've got to listen see the first way to survive your spiritual blackout is simply to submit yourselves to the will of God and not only to the will of God but you have to submit yourselves to the word of God submission simply means to humble yourself and what God was trying to get over to Israel then is what he wants to get over to us today that not only that the only uh, way to God is to humble yourself to his will Oftentimes we find ourselves in a struggle and in a battle because we understand that when we've got to humble ourselves to God, it takes us out of the, out of the equation. When we have to humble ourselves to God, it causes us to have to sacrifice some things. When we humble ourselves to God, it makes us have to give up some things that we don't want. Now y'all going to look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. You've got to give up some things in order for God to give up some things for you. Turn to your neighbor and say, you've got to give up some things if you're going to submit to his instruction. But if you're going to survive the blackout, you've got to listen to the instructions of God. You've got to listen to his word. Because the only way to get the word 
is to let God pour into you the hidden mystery of his unsearchable riches. My father's children, you've got to have the word on the inside so that it can work on the outside. Oh, I wish I had a Bible reader that can say with me, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I would not, what, sin against thee. See, the psalmist knew something about blackouts for he declared in Psalm 119, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. See, it is the word that will sustain you through your blackout. It's the word of God that will tell you that I am what this book says I am. I'm more than a conqueror. I am what this book says I am. I can do all things. Oh, have I got a witness here? Through Christ, which strengthens me. I, 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 I I've got the word of God because what I know about the word of God that is sharper than a two-edged sword. It's milk for infants. It's meat for men. It's hope for the hopeless. It's a friend to the friendless. The word of God will help you over when you can find and see your way. That's it. I wish I had a witness here. But not only do you have to submit to instruction, but the second thing you have to do is trust in his name see because verse 10 says let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust what in the name of the Lord see trusting in the name of the Lord means putting total dependence on Jesus Trusting is confessing, as the old song says, as Deacon Johnson sings sometimes during devotion, Lord, guide my feet while I run this race because I don't want to run this race in vain. See, many people take light for granted until it disappears. We've all experienced groping in the dark, trying to find our way to find the light switch only to discover that you've just experienced a blackout. See, when I was a kid, my mother, uh, we, my brothers and I, we still laugh to this day. My mother is afraid of lightning. My mother does not like the sound of thunder. And when we were children in our house, anytime my mother would hear that a thunderstorm was coming and that lightning was around, she would shut off all the lights. And we had a, we had a, we, we had a, 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 a little uh, wood, a, a mahogany coffee table, walnut coffee table with the, you know, the old table that had the marble ends on the, on the ends of it and then had compartments on each side of it. Well, those compartments apartments were supposed to be used to put stuff in but when the thunderstorm came my mama would heisten up the window because she believed that if lightning got in it's got to find its way back out and then she would put me and my little brother in the cubbies of the coffee table but she would not leave us in the coffee table unequipped. One thing mama gave us was a flashlight because she knew that if we couldn't survive the storm and if we experienced a blackout, we had a light. I wish I had a witness that will help to guide us through our way until the power came back on. Have I got a witness here? Have I got a witness here? You've got to understand who your light is I don't know who that rapper is but I said on my birthday seven they're gonna sing shine a light on me what what they're going they're going I'm sorry that's that's after y'all's time y'all they up here looking they don't know what's going on uh, Anissa you know it shine a light oh you better get it We'll go through a tutorial and Bible study on Wednesday for those who. <laughs> My mother was scared of lightning. But what I've discovered one thing about blackouts is that 
they can cause serious panic and distress. See, because uh, I don't want you to uh, misunderstand a blackout. See, a blackout does not necessarily and simply mean when the actual lights go out. See, you can have blackout experience. I wish I had a... I wish I had somebody. You can have a blackout experience in your own life. Uh, can, I, can I help somebody? See, your blackout could be an unwanted health diagnosis. Your blackout can be an addiction that you just can't shake. Your blackout could be when the double zeros are on your account and not in your account. The blackout can be when there's no food in your refrigerator when the devil tells you you're defeated and you won't make it out of your blackout. You've got something. Yes, sir that'll hold you over because when you are in God I might be blacked out but that does not mean the light is out inside of me have I got a witness here and when you know where your source is you can utter the words of the scripture and say the Lord is my light and the Lord is my salvation whom shall I fear and whom shall I be afraid the Lord is the strength of my life of whom I wish I had a witness here but not only can you say that the Lord is my light and my salvation you can also say to your enemy in the midst of your black eye that blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stand in the way of sinners you can say when you know who your light is that bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name and forget not all his benefits who forgives us all of our sins and heals us of all our diseases yes. trusting in the name of the Lord let's God know that even in the darkness I still have light in other words what's blacked out on the outside is not blacked out on the inside see when you have Jesus on the inside you've got light on the outside because Jesus is the light of the world what does what 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 Jesus does is push back the darkness in your life in a chaotic world and that's the reason you can walk by faith and not by sight because Jesus said that ye are the light of the world I wish I had a witness and even in a blackout I've got light but not only do you have to submit to instruction and not only do you have to trust in the name of the Lord but third and finally you've got to rely on the right power Amen. you've got to rely on the right power see just because there's no light on your path doesn't necessarily mean there's no, there's no power in your progress. The last way to survive is to know who has the power. Now many of you don't know this, but as you were sitting in your seats, part of this church experienced a blackout yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. and immediately we went to the source yes, I wish I had a witness yes, sir. Come on now. and we had to check the power see because just because the light is off don't mean the power is off y'all don't y'all not hearing me see it was black on one side but there was still power on the other side and can I have can I help somebody we went to this source to try to find power but the power wasn't in this source the power was on the other source and I'm trying to tell somebody you've got to rely on God and know that God is your power yeah. 